B2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So how's the practice going on guys? Uh, is everything getting into your mind or it's, it's overflowing? You guys can just type in. All are good. Okay, good. All right, so let's start up. Uh, I think in the last session we uh, stopped on, on on the. Okay, we we learned about private. Uh, we learned about public. We learned about default. Uh, so the last one which I left out was the protected one. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Free. Now, uh, so uh, as when you talk about protected uh, specifier, uh, it uh, you can only access this uh, protected one inside the package, or in the same uh, same hierarchy. Okay. So when I talk about same hierarchy. Uh, let's talk about, uh, we already have a hierarchy here. We have a person and we have got an employee here. And you see that employee is basically extending your uh, person class. Okay. Now, uh, the person class has got all the access to the employees uh, without any issues at all. Okay. Because uh, if you talk about name, age, and SSN, uh, both all the three are private and you have got the setters and getters. And uh, here you are basically uh, setting the values of name, age, and, son, uh, and SSN using your constructor itself. Okay, you do not have the access to the variables outside the package. Sorry, outside the class here. Okay. Now we even spoke about uh, uh, for that reason. What you do is you need to have uh, the the member variables as private. So when I say member variables, so these are the members of this particular class. So these are. Uh, these are private and you can access it using your uh, using a setters and getters and we did not add the uh, setter uh, the setters for SSN and H. We know the reason why. Okay, we don't want anyone to change the SSN and uh, sorry SSN and name here. Okay, and age we had uh, the getters and setters because uh, I want someone to change the age depending on the uh, timeline. Okay, so if today uh, this year it is 10, next year it is 11, blah blah blah, right? Now, uh, we didn't speak about protected here. So when you talk about protected, uh, what I can do, let's say uh, I'll be having <clears throat> a particular uh, variable here. Let's say if I say protected, okay, and and see these these uh, uh, specifiers are good for even the variables, or it could be for the methods also. If you have the methods accordingly, it is good. The, you have the same. A visibility of your variables and the methods accordingly okay so let's see talk about the protected now so when you talk about protected uh, let's say i say int id okay so i say person has got some id over here right now uh, when you talk about person if you go to the employee okay so if i try to access uh, if i try to access the uh, id i can just say variable uh, this dot id equals to let's say 10 okay that means being in a subclass right now if i say uh, this dot name it is not visible because name age and ssn all are private here okay but only one thing which is visible right now to the subclass is your id okay and you're just giving an id as 10 here so the main objective is i can access the variable in my subclass when i talk about subclass employee is a subclass to your person here okay so uh, this way I can do it and let's say if I create an employee, let's say, okay, I right click a uh, new class. So I'll just try creating a 
uh, Java file here. And what am I going to do? I'm just going to create an uh, instance of your employee. Okay. So I say employee EMP equals to new uh, employee. Okay. Um, okay. So I just give give some age, uh, some name here. Uh, test. And the age will be, let's say, 12 SSN will be something. Okay. All right. So now uh, let's try accessing uh, the ID right now because I have created an instance of your in, instead of uh, instance of your employee, and I want to create an ID of this, right? So if I say sys out, right, and emp dot ID, okay. Now if you see here, uh, uh, I have no access to the ID here, right? Now, since even the employee is actually, is this correct? One sec. Okay. So this, since even though employee is extending a person right now, I'm trying to access the ID. So even though I'm not able to get the ID here. Okay. Now, what if I do it somewhere here? If I have a method here, public void uh, print behavior of employee. Okay. Now, if I say sys out and I just say ID, okay, we'll do one thing. Yeah, even though this, yeah, this is this is still accessible here because you are you are in the subclass right now, and the subclass has all the rights to access your variables here. Okay, and then uh, we're coming on to this property. We are not able to access this. Okay, and uh, we'll talk about uh, yeah. Okay, so this is this is not accessible as such here, right? Now, if I go to these uh, some of the package also, so when you talk about protected, okay, you can access the protected uh, inside the same package, okay, if it is your uh, your subclasses and all. And if I have a different class, different uh, package also, let's say when you talk about person, this person, okay, what I'll do right now. I have an ID here. Okay, I'll create the new class. Okay, I'll create a class inside this package itself. So let me say it as a client here and public. And I'm going to create a person here. Person P E R equals to new person. Okay. Now if I say sys out, I say P E R dot ID. Now, if you see here, why this ID, which is protected, was not accessed in your client program here, right? Now, if you see, as I said, when you talk about protected, it will be only access to the subclasses or inside the same package, right? Now, if you see the person here, the person has got a property ID here, okay? And... So the person has got an ID here, all right? And in the same package itself, I'm creating a client program here, okay? So when I create create the client program in the same package, <clears throat> that particular uh, client is able to access your ID, okay? Now let's see if I just say same copy this and create in some other package. Let's say this is some other package here, right? Now if you see, I'm getting a compile time error saying that the visibility is not there in this case. Okay, so that means when you talk about a protected, it is always accessed inside your inside your package. Is there a question uh, from Rashmi? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm just muting you. Okay. Uh. All right. So uh, here, if you see, uh, it is as it is as I said, it is not accessible. So protected is always accessed inside the package or in the subclasses, right? So when I talk about inside the package, as I said, this client and the person are, person are in the same package. So for that reason, your client is able to access the properties of your person, okay? So when I talk about this client... A vast virus database has been updated. Okay. So when I talk about this person, this client here, as you know, this ID is, uh, this, the employee is, I'm creating an uh, object of this employee 
in a different package, so it is not accessible here. Okay. <clears throat> now, this, these are the basic features of what you need to understand when you talk about encapsulation. Uh, so, which one to make it protected, which one to make it private, which one to make it public. So, it all depends on you what you do with here. Okay. Now the same thing goes for your uh, for for your methods also. Okay, so depending on uh, the specifiers, those methods will be accessed in different packages accordingly. Okay, now let me even comment this out. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's let's jump on to a different topic which is very much related to the same uh, same thing which we are going to discuss right now. Okay, so we are going to talk much about the uh, about the inheritance. And let's see what all things we can do with using your inheritance. And there are different things which are going to talk about right now. We are going to talk about abstraction. We are going to talk about interface also. Okay. Now, we spoke about one particular hierarchy here. We spoke about a, a person we and a person. We spoke about an employee here. Okay. Now, these two are in a particular hierarchy. Correct. Now, even though they being in a particular hierarchy, I still have the access from any of the client program to create an instance of the person right now i do not want i just basically want some basic information in the person and i want somebody to inherit those properties right so if suppose a person is having uh, some behavior in it let's say print me okay so the print me behavior i want all these uh, subclasses should access these behaviors okay so let us let me create a new package and we'll uh, start it from the very beginning um so right click what is this okay uh new package and let me re uh, name this as uh, abstract uh, interface example okay no right click new class so I'm going to create a hierarchy here. So let me create a hierarchy for uh, for a person. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me say it is a person here. So person has got some properties. If I can copy and paste the properties from this person, copy this and paste it here. Okay. And let me take copy the constructor also. Uh, copy this. Okay. Uh, let me copy this first try as of now, then we'll delete it later. Okay. And uh, I have got uh, the setters and getters accordingly and uh, whatnot. Okay. So leave it as it is. Okay. Now, uh, I know that this is person as it is there in the very top hierarchy right now. I want, obviously, when you talk about a person, you, when you talk about an employee, you talk about a person, right? So I know that uh, when I talk about an employee, employee will definitely extend your person here, right? So let me say new class, okay? And uh, let me create a class known as uh, employee, okay? Or uh, let's say this is uh, XYZ employee, okay? So this is <clears throat> XYZ employee and uh, finish okay so, and this this is going to extend your person which is present in your uh, abstract interface example okay so this is a plain and simple hierarchy which we have created right now okay and let me add up the constructor here with this details okay <clears throat> now i have created and uh, created a class XYZ employee, which is extending your person for sure. All right. Now, at the same time, I can even create one more employee here. Let's say a new class ABC employee. So this is from the XYZ company. And this is from ABC company. And the same thing here. This goes uh, person here and the person is going to be the super class of your ABC company. Sorry, ABC employee. So let me add even the constructor also and delete this uh, unwanted comments. Okay, so very plain and simple right now. Uh, uh, being uh, being a client program. Okay, what I can do? Right click a new. Uh, let's say I'm going to create a new 
package here it's a dot client so this is my client program wherein i'm going to create a uh, okay i can just have this client as a company also so right click new class and i'm just going to say this as a company okay company to hire not fire so create a main class here and uh, main method here and what do i do i just basically say see here i'm basically dealing with a particular hierarchy of a employee okay it could be any kind of hierarchy when you talk about animal animal has got its own hierarchy so when you talk about a person person has got its own hierarchy and and things like that so here uh, i know whenever i want to create a create a person uh, sorry create an employee i will basically say abc employee abc equals to new abc employee okay that is how basically i will do it and uh, let's me uh, let me take the name as uh, jayram okay and yes this one is your 12345 okay now uh, in this hierarchy i will only talk about an employee as a set right so i can even uh, what did i do here i just created an employee here abc from the abc company and i created an uh, reference here and i created an object here okay now i still have an option for me to create a person here right person per equals to new person okay so per is so n and let me even copy the same thing here paste it here okay so i need to import this one and uh, okay i need to import this as well right because both are in the different packages who all are in different package company to hire as well as the person are in different packages here okay now what next i am not supposed to create an object of a person here okay because i am only talking about an employee here okay i am not at all interested in a person i am when when uh, when a company is uh, hiring uh, an employee let's say an experienced employee okay so let's let me rename this to hiring experienced uh okay hi company to hire experienced guys okay. a very big class continue okay. now a company to hire experienced guys no i know, i know that whenever i uh, create uh, whenever being a company to hire i want an employee who is experienced one i don't want any 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 fresher guy to be part of my company okay now but still i i still have an a, option for to create a person uh, simply okay because even that person is not been associated to abc employee or maybe it is an xyz employee all right now what should i do in order to stop this one okay now we will talk about abstract right now so in order to i don't want any of the class to create an instance of this person so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say this as abstract okay so when you create an uh, create a class as an abstract class you basically cannot create an instance of the abstract class so that is what i'm getting a compile time error here comment this out this is ruled out now question is why did i made this as an abstract okay now uh, when i make this as an abstract i know that i cannot create an instance of this particular class okay now i want some uh, in this abstract class what i'm what i am going to do is i am going to have some methods let's say uh, public void print uh, print person behavior okay now as i am talking about print person behavior i will say here sys out and i'm going to say simply uh, name because when i talk about a person i only talk about the name and uh, a name equal to name plus uh, ssn okay plus h that's all okay uh, because i know when i talk about a person i will not even now uh, be able to talk about uh, an employee because this is at the top of the hierarchy okay now the same thing being a subclass right being uh, maybe it is an abc employee right 
or maybe it is an XYZ employee, right? Now, both the employees in the client program, when I say ABC dot, right? So I can basically print the behavior of that particular employee. So right click, run as Java application. So I'm able to see the details of this particular employee, okay? Now, uh, I'm good here. Uh, the same thing goes for your uh, XYZ employee also. So if I create an instance of your XYZ employee, copy these things and paste it here. Okay, so I just say XYZ employee. This goes as XYZ, XYZ. Okay, you just need to import this. And the same thing goes here. If I, uh, let's say this is JRAM XYZ, okay. And let's say this is 35 and this is 11111. So right click run as Java application. I get the desired result out here. Uh, what is this XYZ? Okay, now let's see what's, what's happening here. Uh, when I uh, use this XYZ, okay, so there's an issue here. Right click, run as Java application. I'm good right now, okay. Uh, XYZ dot print. All right, okay. Now, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Ajit. All right, so what next? Why did I do all these things? Because all these things you guys know already, right? Uh, that means in my in my super class, I am basically having a basic. I mean, I'm having a default functionality here, and you even know that if you, if you want to have its own, I mean, employee wants to have its own specific behavior, so employee can go here and uh, basically overwrite this particular functionality, correct? So and then I can uh, write whatever I can. Uh, let's say I want to say here, uh, I am from. ABC employee, right? So if I go here, right click run as Java application, I basically get it as ABC employee because I have already overridden the functionality. Pretty simple, okay? So as of now, I don't even, okay. So this is one behavior which I have it here, right? Now, uh, I want that whoever the employee is, they have to override the functionality of your print person's behavior, okay? But if you see here, uh, still XYZ is not even implementing it, even though when I talk about XYZ, XYZ is not saying I'm from which company, correct? But when I talk about an ABC employee and say print uh, print behavior, I am able to access uh, a saying that, okay, I'm from ABC employee here, apart from accessing the variables out here, uh, we are not even interested about that, those things at all, okay? So here, when I run this program, uh, the ABC company is saying that, ABC employee is saying that I'm from ABC employee, but still your XYZ is not telling me he's from which employee, right? So what should I do in order to make sure that whenever your uh, XYZ employee is extending a person, okay, he has to implement the functionality by himself, the way ABC has done it over here, okay? So what should we do in that case? Let me go back to the person, okay? And let's not even talk about this behavior right now. Let me have, let me have it, let me have one more method right here, okay? So in this, I will say, okay, so no, not a good idea, okay? So what am I gonna do is, instead of print a person's behavior and I've given the implementation, what am I going to do is, I'm going to remove this, okay? Just give a semicolon. Okay, and say public abstract void print person behavior. Okay, now in an abstract class, you can have abstract method. Now, what is the use of this abstract method? Okay, now even I could have had something like this also. Uh, one method which is having the default implementation. So this is what you have the default implementation. Because uh, T A T I O N. Okay, so you have the default implementation so that if anyone is going to invoke this particular method, they are going to on, on their own reference. If, if you have not overridden the way ABC has done it, okay, then that means your uh, all the classes will be definitely going to 
uh, invoke this particular method. Okay, fair enough. Now, what am I going to do is I'm going to have one more functionality, one more behavior, okay, uh, of a particular person for an employee in specific. Okay, so here if I'm going to say here uh, public void uh, employee behavior, right? Now I'm going to make this as an abstract method. Now there is a reason behind why I made this as an abstract because uh, being a person, okay, uh, I, as I'm talking about an employee, all right. So let us let us in, instead of making this as a person, let us uh, make this as an employee itself, okay. So let me make this as an employee itself. So right now the complete class continue. So if you see everything is employee. So on the top of the hierarchy, I've got an employee. And employee has got a name, SS, and an age, right? So everything all good here, right? Now here I've got a de uh, default functionality of a method, default method behavior, and the other one is your abstract void employee behavior, right? Now what am I saying? I do not want to implement the employee's behavior in the same class. Instead, I want the subclasses to be forced to use this particular behavior. Now if you go and see the XYZ employee, it is giving me a compile time error. If you go back to the ABC employee also, it is going to give me a compile time error. So what should I do? Just click on here and say add un unimplemented methods. So when I say add unimplemented method, what it basically does, it basically overrides the functionality which is present in your employee class. Okay. And if you see here in the employee class, you just have the skeleton of your method. So this is just your skeleton of the method okay with its own signature out here okay it doesn't matter whether you uh, you can even have your signatures uh, let's say in name also all right now here what did i do i just added a method employee behavior copy this i went here and unless and until you implement so when i talk about implement right so this is just a skeleton. You have to implement this behavior somewhere in your subclasses. So that's what, as your ABC employee is extending your employee, okay. So if I do, if I do comment this out, I'll be in trouble because I need to, I'll be getting a compile time error. So what it does, it says the type ABC employee must implement the inherited abstract method. So it says there is an abstract method. Go and implement that. So I very well comment and comment this one. Now I have to add my own default uh, implementation here, right? So I say here, I am from ABC employee. Okay. Okay. And I work on it's a Java. Okay. So the same thing goes here. I need to copy the same thing here and go to my XYZ employee and same I'll just copy and paste it here now my compile compile time error is gone okay why because I have implemented the method which is abstract in your super class okay now what 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 is the use of this actually because when I talk about an employee I don't want some default behavior on the super class so that any, anybody can inherit that I want that person who's actually implementing uh, actually extending me they have to have their own default behavior accordingly okay it is something like if you talk about a template uh, let's say uh, i give you a ppt when you talk about powerpoint presentation okay it you, you there is a diff, some default templates are already present right so they don't give some uh, default behavior like uh, if you you have a def, uh, default template, let's say whether you talk about a spreadsheet, whether you talk about a PPT, wherever it is, okay, you just use those templates and add your own sketches, add your own data in that. But at the background, you have got some basic templates in that, okay, or basic skeleton of a particular PPT. All right, the same thing goes here. Uh, you have got your basic uh, behavior. I mean, just your skeleton of it, and you are supposed to inherit in your subclasses. Okay, any questions on this? Who is not at all familiar about uh, abstract at all? Does it make sense out here?
please ping me if you have any doubts i'll just wait for a minute because this is very important concept and if you understand this uh, we are going to jump on to another topic right now which will help you in understanding things so please uh, speak out and uh, come up with some concerns here Infosys provides world class online IT training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide H2K Infosys how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.